we're actually 79 degrees right now in the back of the van but it's it's working I'm, I'm feeling the cool air you can barely see the the tape still moving from it so it's working oh, so the thing about these Florida summers days that it gets so hot we've been experiencing some hot weather like like very hot hotter than usual working in the van here it'll be a day when it's about let's say it's 96 degrees the back of the van will end up showing about end up being about 106 so it's very hot to work back there you try as much as you can the ac and all that but still doesn't necessarily um, solve the issue so even here i just opened the door it's 98 degrees on my 98 degrees and 56 percent humidity and that's inside the van i think right now it's cool outside it just rained but it's probably about in the 80s low 80s right now i can't keep running the ac in the van while i'm parked up doing repairs because it just completely puts too much stress on the ac itself plus also i'm sitting in one place with all that heat soaking in it so it's putting a lot more strain and stress on the uh, AC compressor. I've already com replaced that compressor once a year. Granted, I end up buying the cheap ones just because I know it's gonna break. So what I decided to do is, I'm just going to buy a AC mini split system. So here's the mini split system. It's a 110 or well, 115 volt system. It's a 12,000 BTU. This is the system this is the extra battery that i bought another 200 amp hour battery that's the head unit it's my water jug because it's hot out here but this is the the bracket i'm going to put and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add that to the back of the van i'm going to mount it on this door i'm actually thinking about removing the license plate to put it on this side because once it's removed, I'll be able to put it on this door so that I'd have access to opening this one, still getting things in and out. This door doesn't really get opened as much. So to remove all of this material here, um, and this remounted on this side, figure out how to get it done, but that's probably gonna be the best option for me. We're gonna check it out, see how we do. But for the time being, like I said, it's just, it's just a lot. It's not comfortable in here in the middle of the summer when it's pushing, you know, a hundred degrees in the back. Like that's, you can only imagine how stifling that is. So I have my Power Queen 200 amp hour lithium battery. I'm going to add it to the one that's already underneath that workbench. So I'm told I'm gonna end up with 400 amp hours of power. Um, just because I know the ACU system is not gonna technically take a lot of power, but I wanna make sure I have enough to run that and run my office. Because I have to run the AC, light, TV, heat station, soldering iron. The heat station's actually what uh, probably pulls the most energy. Just want to make sure I have enough power for when I do that and also be able to have the AC run for a good amount of time. Maybe by August I'll probably end up adding some solar panels to the roof but right now I'm just charging off of um, the alternator so I'll, I have a DC DC charger inside that charges at 40 uh, amps per hour. Obviously I'll never run this down to zero but if I ran it to down to zero I could always turn the car in and run it off the alternator. Technically, be a 10 hour run from zero to you know, fill up four amp hours, but um, but technically, I won't be doing that. And more likely, be not drive around. I'll only run it when I am driving. It does add some strain to the alternator, but having the DC to DC doesn't pull as much as it possibly could, so it helps. So, I'm just going to get that out the way, get these in there, then head to Home Depot to get some uh, some parts. So I'm in the van, I have the my battery, which I'm going to take out. So it's 200 amp hours. 
Power Queen, uh, two, uh, it's a plus battery, so this is a max of 200 amp draw, so I can pull from this. But I'm going to take this out, I'm going to put it in place of my other battery under here, so that while I'm driving around, I can charge this up to max. Because what you want to do is, I'm trying to put these together in parallel strings so that I can have 400 total amp hours of battery. But first thing you have to do is make sure you charge them both up to the same level and then put them together to equalize. I'm going to charge this up because I only can charge it through my DC to DC charger that I have here through my alternator. So I'm going to charge this up uh, throughout the day tomorrow while I'm driving around. And then once I'm finished, by the end of the day, I'm going to take them both out and let them equalize so that by the day after, I can uh, put them together and have a string of 400 amp hours worth you know of, of battery uh, capacity under here so I'm just gonna take everything out plug it up and I have to obviously make space for the new battery. I'm gonna probably rearrange everything here so that I can have both of them in a better position all right I had to come to the Home Depot let's pick up a few things so now when we're looking at it with this back door, I wanted it to actually be on the passenger side, but I don't want to add any flexible refrigerant lines, so it's going to end up being on the driver's side door, because I want to be able to at least open the door to be able to get stuff out of here if need be. And as we can see on the door, I don't necessarily use as often all the AC stuff in here but with this door I want to put them through obviously it's a sheet metal it's real thin so I'm gonna add an angle bracket along here um, and the bottom as well just to shore it up but then I'm also gonna add probably some um, so I want to add some angle iron here to make this sturdier I want to tie it into the side of the doors, but uh, I don't want to do too much here. So I'm going to add some angle iron down here on both of the uh, screw points for the uh, the mount. And then I'm probably going to take some, some strap hanger and also add it to the, the, the angle bracket and tie it into this piece so that the majority of the weight is not only on just one skin of the door, it'll be on the back here. And then I'm going to add the ear handler up here. I'm going to add a piece of wood to strap it onto, screw it down. And um, it's going to actually come over. It's probably going to be about this much over. So when I close the door, it's probably going to be up to about here. Look at my address. Probably about here. But even still, I'll be able to open up this one side door to be able to get to anything else that I may need uh, push anything in because this side I don't really do anything I already have my workbench everything over here so this door doesn't really get used anyway so I'm just gonna drill into the skin here to put the the uh, the wall mounts for this AC unit the AC unit's about I believe 60 pounds so that should be uh it should be should be good for how i'm looking to make it stronger so it can hold up better all right so i ended up adding in these uh angle brackets uh measured out the the mounts on the other side of the door and that's how you know add the angle brackets to sturdy it up make it stronger and then um I added these little strap hangers to this because the majority of the weight is going to be pulling from the top. So I added these to add some extra tension down to the thicker part of the door. So we'll see how that goes. They're real tight. You can see there's a little bending here, but it's actually pulling a lot of weight down. So we're going to see how this goes, if it holds up well against driving on a road and the weight of the AC compressor itself. But everything looks good here. Had to remove the plate. Um, I might put it back. I don't know what the cops are going to say, but just had that attached there. I'm just going to add the AC on here and see what it does. See how it looks. So 
So we have the outdoor unit on the brackets. It's hanging off here. We get some movement, but for what it is, this door is not going to be opened as much. But once it's closed, it's actually sitting on the um, the bumper itself. So that's shoring up, adding that. So I'm going to head on a little while, just look at it, test it out, see how it uh, it handles. I have to relocate my license plate. I'm just going to put it on here for the time being, but I'm going to hook up the, uh, the indoor unit and the, the coolant lines and cables and everything another day, but uh, it's holding up. It's pretty sturdy. Not really moving, so. All right, so I'm parked up here. I ended up installing a two by four piece of wood to the back door. I'm gonna screw the inside unit onto this. This board is, I've got the exact measurements, how thick it is, but I believe this should hold up well with the, uh, the wood screws when I add to it. So obviously it hangs past the lip of the door, but I'm fine with that because I don't open up this side often. So um, I'm fine with that. I had to cut out the notch just for the latch that's here so that it doesn't hit this piece at the top. So I'm just going to install the bracket now and see how everything looks. So I just decided to put the template up here. This is where the wall mount bracket is going to go, right here in the center. So I'm just going to drill out a couple holes just to get started to know where it is and if uh well I'm definitely not going to drill out this hole. I may end up drilling out this hole to push the piping through the back and more than likely bring it down through here. So come from here, down here, and then figure out what I'm gonna do with the excess. I'm obviously not gonna completely close this off. Probably gonna build a little uh offset just to have you know the, the the lines the cable set to sit in here and probably hang it so that you know it's gonna be excess all right so I have the bracket up it's holding in here pretty strong I'm just going to install the the indoor units hang it on here see how it looks how it feels and go from there I'm not gonna drill the hole as of yet um, probably should but yeah, I'm gonna check this out, see how it goes. So I have it hanging on the door here. It actually closes up pretty well. I thought this would be a little closer to this wall, but it's not. But even still, I'm following this template here, it's just enough space to keep it in or far enough from the, uh, the edge of the door itself. Got enough space on the side, close the door. I have it completely latched in, but have my laser machine actually in the way of the vent, but that's not a problem. I'm thinking if no, nah, I probably shouldn't. I could probably raise it maybe an inch. Let's raise it an inch and let's get a little higher. Get a little bit more air to blow through. All right, so I realized that the unit itself doesn't come all the way over. So for where it's lined up here on this door, this side, and this side, it doesn't even hang over to my other door. So this is perfect here. The unit is actually smaller than I expected, so I just ended up cutting out some of this wood. I'm gonna sand that down, but this um this fits even better. Like I said, I don't I don't open this door at all. It's looking good so far. A little gap here, but yeah. So I have the indoor unit here. I'm just wiring up the power cables for it. So these cables are actually um, labeled. So you see it says L2, go 
goes to the L2 slide. The black one says L1 on it, but just always make sure. There we go. See, so it's L1. The middle one says L2. This is, it says S. And then this is the the ground. Just got to tighten that up. But um, snaked it through the back. I'm going to add the, the uh, clamp that holds this in place. And then I'm going to put it into the wall. And then going to at least be done with this until we wire up all the other um, connections so now I'm thinking to myself do I really want to push these hoses through that shallow wall that I made or should I just go straight down because technically everything is just going to be coming from it's going to still come out the bottom here but I'll make my life easier if I just have it coming straight down same on this side, just come straight down and have my line set and then everything through the wall. It just makes it easier for access if anything needs to be repaired instead of having to go into the wall or try to remove everything else. It just makes it a lot easier. So it's not the best job, but ended up cutting out a little access for the hoses now to go through. So I go straight down, use a little Dremel tool that I have here just to get it done so I stayed I switched it up ran the drain hose and the refrigerant lines out the bottom of the indoor unit just gonna put it here I'm gonna connect the other refrigerant lines and I ended up cutting a hole into the door I'm gonna push it straight through here it's so not once it's straight through here what I'll do is I'll run the line just down and then across and then connect to everything here. Just keep it as, as neat as possible. All right, so I have the, the ring that comes with this. So I'm about to put this in. I put a little plastic seal that came with the kit. I put that on just to create a good seam. I'm gonna also add um, some caulking around this once I have everything seated because this is not a exactly a flush hole. So I don't want to necessarily get water underneath, but I'm gonna add, let's push this in. Let's do it. So you install an AC system here in Florida because I've only been standing out here in the sun for about five minutes. You will swear I was playing a game of basketball. It's hot, even in the van right now. It's 105, and that's what the door is open. Jeez. Woo! So at this point, everything is hooked up. I have the unit on the back of the door. I've connected all the lines myself. I did a thread locker on it as well. I called out an HVAC tech so that he can go over my work and also pull a vacuum on my lines. I didn't end up buying the vacuum kit uh, offline just because I wasn't going to be doing this often. But he went through, pulled the vacuum, it was great, spot on, and then he just released the refrigerant into the lines for me. All right, so I have it hooked up. I'm going to power it on. So we're on right now. Check the... Yep. I have the fan spinning. It's very quiet. All right, so right now I have the temperature set to 72 degrees. We're on cool, so on high fan speed. And we're pulling 900, going up probably to 1,000 watts. Um, let's see if I hit eco. I'm more than likely going to keep it on eco because uh, I don't need it any more than that. Obviously, I don't want to drain out my batteries, but let's see what it gets to. On eco with the fan high, it looks like it's level out at about 740, 747 watts, 746, might get a little lower. It is kind of cool, it just rains, so we're actually 79 degrees right now in the back of the van. But it's it's working, I'm, I'm feeling the cool air, you can barely see the... The tape's still moving from it, so it's working. So with my 400 amp hours of 400, yeah, amp hours of battery, 
it's pulling about 58 amps from the battery probably 57 because the lights eh, it might be about 56 56 amps and um, we technically could run this for six and a half hours at this current setting hey it's a win put the fan on low oh, what do we get we're at 635 watts let me see if I put it on turbo what it does. 755 watts with the turbo setting, which I don't quite understand. Am I still in the eco? Oh yeah, I was still in eco. So without eco, it's bumped up. It's pulling, still going. I believe we want to hit over a thousand watts. I do have a 3,000 watt inverter in here. Yeah, hit a thousand watts. So that's what turbo turned on, and it's 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 pumping out some pretty good air too. Turn turbo off. Put the fan back to low, and I'm gonna put it on eco. See how much it drops. Yeah, we're good here. I'm gonna end up adding some solar to the roof. Uh, I'm gonna add some reflectix to the door add a little panel just to try to fight off as much as that hot sun that heats up this tin box but mini splits installed it looks good it's running well just got to tighten up some things got to add some uh, caulking to the the outer ring that the uh, hoses go through just to seal that up but everything seems to be going well right now it's nice and cool back here yeah, 72, 72 degrees right now that the, uh, now, but obviously we have rain, so I'm not necessarily fighting against the Florida sun beating down on the, the van right now itself, but I can get work done at least. So, oh yeah, we've just dropped down to we're about 358 Watts. So yeah, we've hit it. We've hit 72 degrees in here right now. So I'm pretty sure the temperature recirculating, picking up the temperature of the, uh, the the air inside here. So the fan definitely ramped down, but we're good to go. So it's pretty cold in here right now. We're at 68 degrees. Um, I have it on low and on eco. It's pulling 296 watts, but um, it's not hot outside. You see, it just rained. But um, it's doing well. I love it. This is working great. It's magnificent. If you have a van and you're looking to add some AC on it, obviously I wouldn't technically recommend running this on 200 amp hours of battery unless you have a good solar system. But even then at that point in time, if you have a good solar system, I say, you know, at max, what I saw here is pulling a thousand watts at um, turbo cool. So if you have a thousand watt system on your roof, fine, but you might be best off with a at least a 400 amp hour battery bank. Even then, it still might be pushing it. Might you know the bigger the bank, the better. But as long as you have enough solar on your roof, you can get away with running that probably be a prolonged time so next month i'm probably going to add about i saw some 375 watt panels i gotta check the sizing on them see if it actually fits on the roof uh properly um probably try to get two of them on there at least give me seven well a little more than 700 watts um but that'll be good to keep the batteries charged up and i won't necessarily have to use my dc to dc charger to charge my 400 amp hours of battery which probably best, but um, at this point in time, my DC DC it only pushes out 40 amps, which is good enough. I don't want to put too much strain on the van's alternator, just because I need that for the van itself. In the meantime, I will be using that. Um, I've been using it since I built this van out. I've never had solar, so that'll be my next project is to add the solar panels. For what it is, this has been a a good 
um, project. It's been great to add this mini split AC system to the van. Took some figuring out how I'm going to do. I'm probably still going to add a little bit more to make sure the outdoor unit is uh, attached great. I'm trying to make sure that's as strong as possible. Was driving up and down the roads. Want to make sure that I have no issue with that falling off. Uh, the indoor units in his place is going to add some uh, line covers just to make it look a little better in the back just for myself obviously so that's it for this video if you have any questions comments leave it below also make sure you hit that like subscribe button like i said if there's any questions you may have like i said this is something that i've done i haven't seen many vans do this but any questions you may have you want to know about my setup anything just drop it down below i'll be sure to get back to you see you in the next one